Hi, I want to show you how to take advantage of a very uh, helpful feature in Logos. Um, suppose you're doing a word study on love in Logos. You can either do a word study in English, that is, just type in love in the uh, Bible word study guide and, uh, and do a search that way. This, of course, does return um, Greek as well as uh, Hebrew words. And so you can do a full Bible, st Bible study in Greek and Hebrew using just English. But suppose uh, you are familiar enough with Greek and Hebrew that you want to just be able to type in, in Greek or Hebrew, the specific word you're looking for. Logos offers uh, multiple language keyboards that allow you to type in, uh, in Greek and Hebrew, as well as other languages, right into uh, the search dialog. Let me give you an example. Instead of love, let's say I'm looking to type, look for agape in particular. Uh, it's very easy to just find, uh, and type in agape right in there. Or suppose I want to look for ahav in the Hebrew. Uh, that was pretty easy too. So how do you install these keyboards? They don't come with the Logos 4 package. You have to download them separately. So that's what this video is about. Uh, what you do is go ahead and go to uh, logos.com. And I'm going to go straight to logos.com forward slash downloads. That's actually the easiest way to get to the downloads page. Uh, you can, you know, search for it through the support page, but it's kind of tricky to find it. So just type in logos.com forward slash downloads, and it'll bring you here. There's various downloads. For example, the iPad and the iPhone applications are available through here. Um, they have other things that maybe aren't so important, for example, ringtones. But they do have the Mac engine available here, and what we're particularly interested in is the Windows keyboards for ancient languages. Uh, you can click right on here, and it'll take you to a web page where it gives you the option to download uh, various keyboards. Uh, of course, Greek and Hebrew, you'd expect those, but they also have Syriac and Coptic keyboards. Uh, as well as a transliteration keyboard, which um, which is available there for you. I figure for m most of us, we just want Greek and Hebrew, and so I'll show you how to do those. The process is the same for whatever keyboard you choose. So I'm going to walk you through just the Greek keyboard, and uh, that show you how to do it for the rest of them. Uh, naturally, of course, to install it, Go ahead and choose the keyboard you want just by clicking right on uh, that link. And it'll bring up a, a dialog box to download or run the, the application. In this case, um, I think it's best to save it first. Uh, and I encourage you to save it to your desktop so it's easy to find. I'm going to do that right now. It's a very small file, so it shouldn't take... Uh, very long at all. I think it's uh, only 518k, so it's half a meg here. Just take a few seconds. Um, it's downloaded, and here it is on my desktop. This is a uh, self-extracting zip file, so you're kind of not not really done yet. Uh, you have to double-click on it, go ahead and hit Run, and it's going to bring up uh, this dialog that's going to let you know that you have to unpack or or extract the files that are in this package. Uh, don't just hit unzip, otherwise they'll be saved in uh, this random folder under application data. It's gonna be hard to find, so what I suggest is click on this browse button and have the files go right to your desktop. So um, navigate through your computer and just dump it right on your desktop there. Once you've selected your desktop as a destination folder, uh, you can hit unzip. It just takes less than a second and you can hit OK and you can close that window. Here it is on my desktop and now I can it's a regular folder with files in it and I can open it up. It gives you some uh, some helpful tidbits in there you can read through if you want to. I'm not going to go through that for this video. But if you click on this folder it'll take you to a subfolder where you have various um, 
files and the one you're interested in to install is the setup file here at the bottom it's about 140k and all you have to do is double click on it in my case uh, I already have the keyboard installed and so the installation process or the installation option isn't available for me but for you it, it'll just say install the uh, the keyboard and then you hit select yes and you can just click finish it's it's actually not any more complicated than what I've done here so walk through that dialogue you will get one more window from Windows asking you if you want to uh, allow that prog program to operate you're going to have to hit yes to do that. Now, as soon as that adds in, you're able to type in, in that language. Uh, so you can go and, and do the same process for the Hebrew. You don't even have to restart the computer. Now, um, how do you switch from English to Hebrew and, and Greek? Uh, the process is actually pretty simple. Um, all you have to do is hold down the Alt button and then press Shift and that'll allow you to switch to Greek. If you hold it one more time, then you switch to Hebrew. And if you do that one more time, that is hold down Alt Shift, you go back to, to English. So Alt Shift allows you to switch back and forth from English, Greek, and Hebrew. And uh, for me, it's been my experience that it's always in that order. Uh, one more thing I wanna show you is uh, that those keyboards work across Windows and what I mean by that is even if you're using um, Facebook or Microsoft Word or anything uh, those keyboards will work across any application you're working so for example if you're writing a paper a term paper uh, you could be writing in English and then just by holding alt shift you can switch to a Greek keyboard and start typing in Greek uh, and then hitting it again you can return to English let's say you want to quote something in Hebrew you hit alt shift twice to get to Hebrew you gotta skip through Greek to get to Hebrew and so now you're typing in Hebrew notice that I'm typing from right to left now uh, to get back to English I just hit alt shift one more time and now I'm back in English so uh, the process is pretty easy and it's pretty um, it's pretty helpful I think I wanna show you one last thing uh, as you're learning to type it might be kinda difficult uh, to get used to where the letters are on the key Windows 7 allows you if you hit the start button and just type on screen keyboard you will get this option here that you can click on and it brings up a layout of your keyboard now by default it's in English but as you um, switch from from language to language so that I'm gonna put, hold down alt shift uh, let me do this one more time notice how my keyboard has changed to Hebrew uh, letters so now I know where to find those and you know if, if you really have to you can actually just click on them if you need to if I hold alt shift again it'll go back to English or at least it should there we go switch to heat uh, to Greek now and uh, it's kind of glitchy on my computer right now but normally it just switches without a problem anyway this could be helpful as you're trying to find where the Greek letters are so you can type in Greek and or Hebrew